Salirà su nel cielo, sempre con lei. La pioggia cade su New York City, scende fin dentro il cuore, mi lava l'anima, ora li vedo andare qui, ora li vedo andare su, guardali insieme. Salirà su nel cielo, sempre con lei. Bravo.
Stammi vicino, bevi e premo lontano Piano alla noia e dalla realtà Basta solo che ti dica di sì Sorridi, bebe
I can tell you all alone is desolation I'm just dying, dying to be in action That's a game that game of my possession Hello everybody and welcome to another Sunday evening session with Happy Hour. I have prepared for you the new software version of PhotoFinder Universe 2023 and it comes with the mole analyzer, the PhotoFinder AI that we unboxed, which means you now see why the software is providing actually a confidence um, on malignancy. That means we added the so-called heat map in the software. That is an added value. It's an educational tool and quite exciting. So let us get you the ATBM, an efficient tool and quite exciting for your daily work. Thank you. Hello everybody, this is Moha. Welcome to PhotoFinder. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Hello, hello. Ciao, Sebi. Ciao, Emilio. Ciao, ciao. Costas, Nisa. Sebastiano Sebi Pelerone, technical support. This is my favorite part of this uh, nice uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, of the yes. nice video that we have as a singer. Uh, Hi, everybody. Hi, friends. Again from, wow, Turkey, Palestine, everywhere. Nigeria, Avila. Where is Avila? Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Uzbekistan. Wow, my God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And more and more and more and more and more. Yes, definitely, definitely. Let me tell you, this is a, again a quite a sad uh, episode because we missed uh, one of our best friends, uh, Gabriella Fabrocini. You know the, the, I suppose that the news uh, were also spreading in uh, Greece and Turkey. As Gabriella was uh, the chairman of the other university we have in Italy, in uh, Naples. Sorry, and. Um, and she suffered from pancreatic cancer. Yeah. And as you know very well, uh, this is an unbeatable cancer. Uh, so after six months, uh, she left. And uh, so, yeah, she was basically my age. And uh, so it's a very sad story. Anyway. Anyway, and not only this, of course, the week was terrible in general. You also heard what happened in Greece in the beginning of... Uh... Yes. Yes, we are so sorry. Accident and so many young people, uh, yeah, being victims of this accident. But I mean, I don't know. Recently, we, I, I have the, the, the I have the, the feeling that we have continuously, uh, at least I receive continuously terrible. Yeah, since we, we don't have the COVID anymore, so we have to. COVID was much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. change direction. Exactly. Anyway, anyway, so we are here, and uh, we are uh, let's uh, let's say uh, let's say very uh, willing to you know uh, put all the bad feelings out of our minds and uh, enjoying our uh, hour together, the happy hour. The right. happy hour in the house. <laughs> yeah. So, what about the uh, the topic of this episode? Sebi, can you ask the question of the week? Oh, are you comfortable with lesions on the nipples? <laughs> at least, uh, one, again, my favorite answer appeared because yes. at last, because for some episodes it was not there. It was not there, but sometimes it's something that we love uh, above all. Yeah? 
But uh, yeah, nipples. Of course, we speak about uh, male nipples and female nipples. We speak about the location, which is definitely a quite uh, peculiar yeah. area, right? Where we should uh, uh, approach our differential diagnosis with a clear mind. So let's see. Let's see. Sometimes, of course, Sometimes. yeah, roughly 50%. <laughs> uh, no, by the way, it's 43%, which is a lot, which means that we need uh, an episode speaking about nipples. Uh, so, so <laughs> we, need, we need many episodes. Yes. So I'm in charge of the paper of the week. Yes. Sebastiano. <laughs> <laughs> Eccolo, paper of the week. <laughs> See, I'm in charge. Uh, uh, Sebi, give me uh, the sharing option. And uh, I like... Jeppy, Jeppy. Yes, yes. Tell me. Oh, que <laughs> bello, que bello. Mamma mia. Lisa, did you get one? Uh, no, I you're don't. Jealous. <laughs> yeah, you're jealous. And I'm so <laughs> jealous. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Emilia yes. has the IBS uh, T-shirt. They have BBC, <laughs> and we have none. Okay, thank you. It will come. It will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nipple and breast lesions. You know, in some way, this is a peculiar area in which, I mean, if you go to PubMed, yeah. and they went there in February 2023, so just very recently, and you type nipple endermoscopy, 61 papers are coming out. Right? So it's not, a, it's not a few papers, right? It's quite a number. By the way, uh, I since there are so many papers, I didn't select just one paper, but three. Eh? Are you happy? Yeah. Very much. <laughs> the first paper comes from our journal, Dermatology Practical and Conceptual. Eh? The, the, only journal, the only journal in the world where it, it is really free, free access, free publishing, nobody's paying, only the, the IDS journal, is paying. The only journal in the galaxy, not only in the galaxy, yeah, <laughs> in the universe. <laughs> so here you see. In situ melanoma of the nipple and areola, dermoscopic report of in two new cases. So, and this is a group from Italy. So they had two cases of uh, melanomas located on, on the areola uh, and nipple area. And they declare something very important. Uh, this kind of, of location of melanoma represents an uncommon diagnosis. And until now, only a few cases have been reported in the literature, okay? By the way, already a few provided with the dermoscopic uh, uh, description. I don't want to get into the details of this diagnosis because the point is when we have a lesion, a pigmented lesion located on the nipple area, the mm -hmm. most uh, probable diagnosis is mel melanosis. Eh? And here you see a very recent paper uh, on five patients with melanosis of the nipple and areola clinically mimicking melanoma. So that's the point, you know, we have to remember that melanoma in this area is very rare and the most common uh, uh, differential is melanosis. And melanosis can really look bad, can really look ugly. Eh? Sometimes it's showing a cobblestone pattern, so then it's fine. Sometimes it's showing a reticular pattern, then it's fine. But sometimes it's showing a multi-component pattern. It, that means that uh, it's not so easy uh, to to leave it untreated. Eh? So very often we... Look at, the image, Jeppe, look at the image number four. Yeah, exactly. Look, this is extremely bad, extremely bad. Eh? So, but at the end, it was just a melanosis, okay? So in some way, it's re replying, uh, in my view, the situation occurring in the genital area, right? Where the most common diagnosis is melanosis, but many of them are very ugly from a clinical and sometimes thermoscopic point of view, okay? So this is the first uh, point I want to make. But the second point and most important point is the following based on this third and last paper. 
which was written by uh, Zoe and Emilio, uh, yeah. together with a group of uh, international um, authors. Uh, this is a uh, study by the International Demoscopic Society where they describe the demoscopic pictures of Paget's disease. And this is the most common pathology located, let's say malignant pathology located in this area. Eh? Paget's disease. What is Paget's disease? When it's located here on the breast, it's a breast cancer. Punto. Okay? There is no other possibility. It's just a, a representation on the skin of an underlying breast cancer. Okay? But what is the problem? The problem is this, that sometimes Paget's disease can mimic eczema, eh? can mimic psoriasis, can mimic even when it's pigmented other kind of uh, diagnosis, of course, melanoma. But of course, here you see uh, on the left side, the nevus, on the middle, uh, in the middle, uh, a melanosis, and on the right, uh, a Paget disease. Can you imagine? This is really looking like a melanoma. So it's extremely uh, common. Uh, I mean, not so common, but it's the most frequent malignancy of this area, okay? So in the study, it, it was clear cut that there are a few uh, uh, structures, demoscopic morph uh, structures that can allow a, a good differential diagnosis. And this is the presence of pink, pink structureless areas, white lines, gray granules, and dots. Eh? And of course, sometimes erosions, alteration, and so on. So white scales, pink structureless areas, white lines, gray granules and dots, uh, erosions and white scales represents the most common um, uh, demoscopic features of Paget's disease. And here you see uh, on the left side, an example of eczema in, in, in which you see these yellow crusts. Uh, in the center, you see psoriasis and uh, uh, therefore uh, with the red dots. And on the right side, you see this combination of features, which are uh, scales and pink structureless areas, uh, a little bit of uh, red uh, dotted vessels, but in the context of a more disorganized pattern. Okay. In conclusion, so this is very, uh, very brief conclusion. Don't expect to see many melanomas in this area. This is an incredible case that we had of a melanoma uh, located on the breast of a 75 year old lady, but this is extremely rare. What is much more common is this scenario in which you have a non-pigmented patch, a scaly red patch located on one single uh, areola. Eh? And here you, may, you can make a diagnosis of possibly eventual Paget's disease because of the combination of scales, so pink structureless areas, and a little bit of uh, asymmetrically located red dots. Basta, that's it. Fantastic, fantastic. But isn't the case, this case of melanoma that you showed, uh, if I remember well, isn't this the case that was never operated and the patient is yes. still doing well after so yes. many years? Yes, I didn't want to get into the details of the no, case. No, no, no. But this no. is a very special, very special case in which the uh, the family uh, decided not to do anything. But still, after I suppose seven or eight years, the lady is still there, and the lesion was only treated with imiquimod locally, and uh, and she's okay. No matter. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah. Unbelievable. I don't remember. Maybe, maybe next true. time I will bring you the follow-up images. Yeah, but the treatment of imiquimod uh, uh, res uh, resulted in a decrease of the size of the tumor, Absolutely. no? Yes, yes. Yeah. Basically, now, at the moment, she has only a minimal residual pigmentation of the, of the, of the areola. So... Please bring the follow-up. This is an yes. incredible case. Yeah. I will, I will. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Fantastic. No, wonderful. Very good. I mean, the, the main point in my view that you highlighted uh, and repeated twice is that uh, practically in our daily routine, the most frequent malignant neoplasms that we, we might see in this location is, of course, Paget disease. And the problem there 
is, as you said, that the differential diagnosis of pagets, because usually pagets is non-pigmented, usually. So the differential diagnosis is from benign, so from inflammatory uh, disorders. Therefore, there is a trap there that we might fall uh, sometimes. While in pigmented pagets, it's not so risky because the differential is melanoma. And then, okay, you, you might uh, biopsy thinking of a melanoma and then... Uh, yeah, the result will come back anyhow. Yeah, what, wonderful. What you... So, I say, Costas. No, so, uh, just uh, in terms of management. So, what do you usually do when you get this examatus plaque on the chest and you're between eczema and uh, pazets? If you are in between, and especially you are in the context of a clinical <laughs> scenario reminding the patient, so older age, asymmetric lesion, so only one um, breast is involved. Of course, a biopsy is definitely mandatory. Mm -hmm. While if you have a 25-year-old young lady uh, with uh, uh, b b symmetric, you know, bilateral uh, breast uh, areolas, uh, uh, red areola, then the most common diagnosis is atopic eczema. And then uh, you can try to make a treatment uh, before doing the biopsy. That's mm -hmm. at least yeah. our way of doing yeah, of course, of course, of course. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, nipple is also a common location for these inflammatory disorders. So for eczema, we all know that eczema of the nipples is, is not rare at all. Of course, typically it should be uh, bilateral, uh, but, uh, you know, exceptional cases always exist. And also it's important to say that in many, in many occasions when we diagnose budget disease, uh, of course, there is an underlying uh, breast cancer in the vast mm -hmm. majority of the cases, but many times this is not diagnosed at the moment that we uh, that we diagnose budget, and then yeah, That's a, it's a, it's a, in some way it's a very it's a very important clue to mask to um 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 unmask uh, an underlying breast cancer. Uh, yeah. There is a comment that uh, the sound is might be low. I don't know if this is uh, true or not. So, but Sebastian. I have my beloved micro micro microphone. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. <laughs> loud and clear. Loud and clear. I also do. <laughs> okay, so let me share uh, a few cases. They are practically in uh, precisely the same con uh, concept as. Uh, Episode. So let's see together a series of cases, including all these differentials that we mentioned, which reflect our daily daily practice. So this is uh, an erythema and desquamation uh, on the nipple. Um, uh, of course, I mean, uh, it's very important. The first thing we have to check is if it's bilateral or, or not, obviously, obviously. Uh, but also uh, morphology might be quite, dermoscopic morphology might be sometimes quite uh, enlightening. For example, here we have a very, very helpful uh, pattern dermatoscopically because this is... Oh, this is psoriasis. Psoriasis, for oh, sure. Wow. <laughs> I thought it's an eczema. Yeah, good. Very good. Yeah, it's it's a, the, the, the typical aspect of psoriasis and this is not the case. Uh, in budget, I mean, of course, we might see dotted vessels in budget disease, but no way with such uh, a regular distribution uh, as they are in uh, psoriasis. So in this case, dermoscopy helps a lot. And here, uh, again, another case of psoriasis on, on, on the nipple. There is also another clinical clue in this image, which helps to exclude budget, which is the fact that the, the plaque in this example here uh, does not involve the nipple. It's mainly in yeah. the areola. So this yeah. can almost exclude budget. In, but in Emilio, Emilio, did you perform a scraping for mycological test or not? In this particular case, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, I, don't... I mean, yeah, maybe, the, you know, you, you should also exclude a kind of uh, tinea. tinea. Corporis, yeah. Of course, of course. That's also another possible diagnosis here. Uh, so the, the uh, when it does not originate from the nipple or when, when it does not involve the nipple, then Paget is extre yeah. extremely unlikely. One more example, again, uh, unilateral this time, uh, erythematous and scaly uh, plaque uh, involving a little bit the nipple. Again, dermoscopy is extremely helpful 
solving practically mm-hmm. diagnostic dilemma. Don't you agree, my friends? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Clear it's cut a spongiosis. Eczema. Clear cut eczema, uh, mm-hmm. yellow crust spongiosis, so uh, no problem. Another case, uh, erythematous and somehow hyperkeratotic lesion. Once again, uh, dermoscopy is quite informative. Mm-hmm. Many, many yellow crusts, a lot of spongiosis. So, mm-hmm. suggestive of uh, eczema. Let's see the next one involving the nipple uh, and also a little bit, I mean, somehow well demarcated at the periphery. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look also at the dermoscopy. Mm, yeah, this tinea. time, tinea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. What, yeah. What, you said, <laughs> what you said earlier. So, tinea might be, uh, of course, an option. And here we can also see this very nice clue. Uh, if you see the peripheral scales, you can see that they are des- the desquamation has a specific um, uh, direction inwards to outwards. So, the, the outer part of the scales is intact while the inner part of the scales is moth eaten, because in fact, it's eaten by, by the fungus as it's growing peripherally. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. a nice clue in general for tinea corporis, and in particular for this location. Which brings us to the next one, uh, clinically very similar to the, to the lesions that we saw uh, earlier. And this is what we get in dermoscopy. So in contrast to what we saw before, no dotted vessels in a regular distribution, no yellow crusts that would suggest eczema, no peripheral scales that would suggest uh, tinea, but a rather structureless pink or reddish, if you prefer, uh, color uh, with some dotted vessels, but definitely not predominating dotted vessels as they are in psoriasis. This is the most frequent pattern of yeah. classic pagets. Uh, uh, there are some variations, of course, but this is the most frequent uh, pattern that we can find. And, uh, of course, histology is very peculiar, very characteristic in Paget disease with the characteristics. Thank you. Those are um, white lines in the image. Uh, I cannot see them very well. Uh, white lines. Because it's quite specific in Paget disease. Well, in this particular image, oof, mm. maybe a little bit, but, I mean... Mm. Uh, not so prominent. Not dying. And yeah. this is another case, nice, because uh, uh, there is another entity in this location, which is not so rare. You can see here a small ulceration precisely on the nipple or erosion. Nipple adenoma. Erosion, maybe. Uh, and the, this is uh, an entity which is rather classified uh, as a benign tumor. Uh, adenoma erosive uh, erosive adenomatosis of the nipple mm. uh, this is mm-hmm. a benign proliferation it's not precisely inflammatory meaning that it does not go away and recur once it develops it remains there uh, it is on the nipple uh, of course the differential diagnosis is mainly Paget uh, disease because it's precisely on the nipple uh, and most frequently, we need a biopsy to uh, to, to to exclude budget and confirm uh, this uh, erosive adenomatosis. And I think that this is my almost last case pigmentation here. Obviously, the lesion starts becoming a little bit suspicious uh, for melanoma. I mean, uh, and then dermatoscopically, this is what we get. So again, structureless coloration. Of course, this time it's not so pink. There are also brown structureless areas, and there are also some tiny brown dots. Which gray dots, yeah, gray dots. In the study uh, that you showed earlier, uh, one a, a frequent finding in pigmented budget disease. The, but the overall pattern is again structureless, combining our areas of white structureless, brown structureless, and pink structureless color. This is. Um, the pattern of, of uh, pigmented budget disease. Ah, one more case. Let's do it very fast. It's feasible. It is what it looks. Uh, like melanoma. No, no. It's... Uh, re- re- yeah, spitz ni- re- re- nipples. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, in an unusual, of course, uh, location, but with, with the classic streaks and pseudopods of reed nevus. And look at this one. This is, I would say quite worrisome, isn't it? 
Yeah. yeah. By all means. By all means. Yeah. There is pigmentation. There are probably uh, a kind of network or or angulated lines, maybe the lower part. Overall asymmetric distribution of pigment. So it's quite worrisome, I would say, for melanoma. And this is histology, which is not clear cut because these large cells, this, they are, of course, atypical cells with a large cytoplasm, and uh, obviously they are atypical, but it's not clear if they are uh, melanocytes or not. But here there is a specific stain that can very easily solve the problem. This is cytokeratin, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, proves that this is, these are paget cells. Paget disease. So this yeah. is not a melanoma. This, this was a case, mm -hmm. very peculiar case of a pigmented pagets. Uh, disease. So these were yeah. my cases. Yeah. Let's... Great cases. Yeah. Great. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Thank you, my dear. Uh, let's see. A few questions. Um, uh, in doubt between paget eczema or psoriasis, is it correct to perform an, an ex adjuvantibus treatment with a topical steroid for a week? Of course. Yes. Oh, no problem. Yes. But yeah, but uh, say, say, say. There are two, three, there are a couple of issues. First, the usual issue that you have to make sure that the patient will come back whenever you decide to do this strategy. Uh, that's very important. A second thing that we should keep in mind is that if you apply steroids on a budget disease, it will, and you check the patient back after, uh, let's say, one week or 10 days, it's quite likely that in your follow up, you will have the impression that the lesion is improving a little bit. Uh, first of all, the hyperkeratosis will disappear probably, uh, and the erythema also might become less evident. Uh, and uh, of course, it will not completely disappear, but it will might give you the impression that the lesion is improving. So with this in mind as a potential trap, then yes, of course, we can, we can try uh, to administer steroids. Yeah. Uh, okay, what about Bowens of the nipple? Yeah, hey. Bowens of the nipple, it exists. I had another case, but I didn't include it. Very nice case, uh, uh, really looking like a Bowens, also histologically. But finally, it was again Pagets. Uh, yes, there is a little bit of a, a problem in the differential diagnosis histopathologically uh, yeah, of yeah. entities. Um, in in my experience, on the nipple and the areola, I didn't, I, I never saw it. I yeah, saw it. rarely, of course, rarely. But I, we have, but you know, a couple of cases. Yeah, of course, they can have. It can happen, but I have no answer to this question. Uh, and what else? What else? You uh, didn't show any balance disease. Ah, again, another question. Yeah, from yeah. I can show you if you like, but no, no, we have. Uh, uh, no time. Melanoma uh, is is more common in females. Melanoma in of the breast. Breast. Uh, mm, I'm mm, not so sure. Not so sure. Not so sure. I have two cases, and they're both on the or on females, but mm. that's yeah. totally anecdotal. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, I don't think that there are robust data. First of all, it's very rare entity. Uh, so I, I cannot answer this question with with confidence. Uh, interest? No, there was no metastasis. Ah, probably Jeff, in your case, uh, there was no metastasis in that woman. No, uh, uh, la, huge melanoma. No, 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 yeah. no. But yeah. this is we a want, case. We don't, we don't want to say that breast melanoma does not give metastasis. No. <laughs> <laughs> that particular case. <laughs> Yeah, in that particular case, there was a miracle ongoing. You know, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely a, an ex extraordinary case, which yeah. means that it is not an ordinary case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not established yeah. rules based on this case. This is an exception. It's not. Yeah. It's not a rule. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is your experience with nipple adenoma in infancy? Yeah, very little experience. I don't have any. Yeah, no, neither. Uh, Nevi exists. Giuseppe asks about Nevi. Nevi might develop. I showed you uh, Spitz nevus, but also you might find a classic, of course, 
um, uh, dermal or compound nevus cilis area. Of course, it might happen. Yeah. Uh, biopsy, what kind of biopsy, whatever. Yeah. For pigmented patient, uh, did you prefer excision or biopsy? Well, well, it was not that large the lesion, so practically yes. But in 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 the case of pigmented, which was small in the in the nipple, but of course in the other uh, cases where it was a big a large plaque, partial biopsy, of course. Yeah, and how would you like to to approach the treatment of budget? Uh, this is at least not our area of uh, intervention because you need a uh, sure. breast. Uh, breast surgeon yes so you because have to refer the patient to the uh, to a breast surgeon because almost always first of all there is an underlying breast cancer now yeah. it would be interesting to to discuss what we would do in the rare occasion of uh, of a budget without an underlying um, breast cancer, uh, I guess surgical excision would be the solution again. And it's also interesting to discuss about extra mammary budget, which, yes. not, which is not the case of the episode today. But for extra mammary budget, um, I, maybe just we can say that radiotherapy is a very, a very nice uh, option. Sure. Of course, in case the lesion cannot be excised uh, exactly. surgically. Exactly. And at least in my experience, I never found an underlying cancer in the context of extra mammary budget disease. Never. Never one, even not one case. Me neither. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely the most common situation is that this is a, a, a carcinoma in situ uh, originating from the um, apocrine glands, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, what else have we seen in cases of actinic keratosis on the nipples actinic keratosis wow it, no, it would be strange in my view <laughs> yeah. I don't have any no. uh, so principally better take always a biopsy from an erythematous lesion on the nipple if we don't have a clear cut diagnosis of eczema or psoriasis right well Yes, I mean, there are several things in the differential, eczema, psoriasis, tinea, uh, but then if not, of course, biopsy mm -hmm. is, um, uh, is the best way to go on. Uh, what else? Mammography in pages, uh, in page uh, suspect cases. Well, before doing ma mammography, our usual way of doing is to make a biopsy. Once you get the diagnosis of page, it, then mammography and uh, referral to the breast surgeon. Yeah. Uh, Seborrhea keratosis is very frequent. Of course, of course, of course, seborrhea keratosis is very frequent, definitely. Uh, in this area. And I agree with this uh, comment uh, that uh, uh, seborrheic keratosis, keratosis is the most common benign uh, condition of this area. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what else? Mycosis fungoides. Okay. Yes, it can happen. Yeah, of course. Mycosis fungoides on the, the breast, of course, yes. The nipple specifically, I don't know. Or, or let's say it never happened to me to, to find a mycosis fungoides only located on the breast. Yeah, I think that it will be so generalized if it yes. has included the nipple that you, it's the last thing that you will yeah. consider you. Yeah, it is, uh, the breast it is, uh, there is a type of mycosis fungoides which has a preference, which the breast is one of the preferential locations. It's the one that in the past was called Pichylodermatrophicans, um, uh, 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 something like this, Pichylodermatrophicans. Oh, yeah. That's a mainly Pichylodermus, Pichylodermatus subtype of, of MF and breast is among the preferred locations, but, but breast, not the nipple. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The, the, the breast. Fantastic. Molto bene, molto Everything. bene. Very good.
Ah, you see now Sebi is reacting very fast. <laughs> I, I like it. Maybe even a little bit faster than he should because we have to show something. We have... Ah, yeah, yeah. Be ah, yeah. Go, go. We will show it after Nisa. Okay, don't worry. Go, Nisa. Yeah, I, I can't stop sharing. No, no, there no, you no. Go. It's not go, a problem. Okay. We will show it in <laughs> It's not a problem. Okay. Um, now let's start with the first case. This is a male. And there's a pigmented itch lesion that had been growing slowly for the last seven months. And in recent months, the lesion had been bleeding easily. And here is a dermatoscopy. Oh my God. We see gray dots, granules, white structures, areas, ulceration, and some sort of vessels and blue structures, areas, and some white lines here. And what's your diagnosis? Yeah. Um, carcinoma, what do you think? Breast carcinoma, breast carcinoma metastasis. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And what are your opinions? <laughs> Mine is that this is a melanoma until proven otherwise. Likewise. Exact, exactly my words. <laughs> melanoma, rule out melanoma. So in the biopsy, we'll write rule out melanoma. Yeah. Melanoma or another cancer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let's see the votes. And the majority think as you are, and this is not a melanoma. Uh, here's palpation was very important because it was very, very firm, an infiltrated lesion. And I thought that this is a breast cancer because yeah. it was so firm on palpation. And it was. And here is the histopathology, and you can see estrogen receptor, cytokeratin, and melan A is negative, only the melanophages uh, were stained. And we saw that blue structure is areas because here is there's an ulceration and basal vacuolar degeneration, and melanin drops down to the derms. That's why we observe that grayish areas, and you also can see the melanophages here. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a breast cancer, in fact. Yeah, it's a breast cancer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we published this case in our lovely journal, Dermatology Practical Conceptual. Wow. And yeah. another case, 40-year-old female, and the lesion occurred six months after starting to breastfeeding and grew very fast. The patient is 40 year old and the lesion occurred after breastfeeding of the baby. Here is a close up and here is a dermatoscope. Ah, okay. interesting. Interesting lesion. Yeah. And what's your diagnosis? Okay. Let's see how, how the vote. Do we have a ball or not for this vote? Yeah. yeah, here we are. Okay. So melanoma BCC, Paget, Reed, and melanoma canthoma. Hey. How old is the patient? 40. 40. 40 okay. year old female. Okay. 40 year old female. And the recent lesion, and it occurred during breastfeeding. Reed. Reed is and the And the majority thinks that it's the Reed news. And do you agree? Yes. Well, why yes. Why not? Also, melanocantoma is is a good option. Uh, I don't think it's malignant. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not malignant. Overall, but benign. Reed nevus is nice. is a is a nice option. Yeah. Yeah, and histopathology was reed nevus here. Workable. Perfect. <laughs> third case. <laughs> and all these patients have dark skin types. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see from the rest, and the patient is 61 year old, mm -hmm. and the lesion uh, occurred six months ago. And here's a dermatoscopy. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Okay. And another close up. Again, you see, I mean, okay. differential diagnosis, melanoma. Third diagnosis. Yeah. Budget. And uh, yeah, I will go for pigmented posits. I didn't see network. It's I. I will go for pigmented posits. Okay, JP. 
Well, uh, again, melanoma. Melanoma. And then you I have to select between the two. Of course, melanoma is my, my real first thoughts, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, pigmented budgets could be. Okay, let's see the words. Again, melanoma. Again, the majority yeah. Yeah. thinks that it's a melanoma, but it's not a melanoma again. Good. And let's see. You see, that's the point, you know, it, melanoma is very rare. The most com probable diagnosis in these uh, atypical cases is budget, yeah. Yeah, and this is another Pedro disease, and there was also a ductal infiltration here, as you can see, uh, pigmented Pedro disease and uh, invasive ductal carcinoma of the breast. And we also published this case, uh, and it's very heavily pigmented, and it's really very hard to differentiate it from melanoma here. And this is my last case, 44-year-old female, history of five years. Eh. We have ulceration. Now we learned, now we learned that uh, we have to consider this uh, ulcerative adenomatosis. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Erosive adenomatosis. Yeah. yeah, yeah, erosive adenomatosis. Uh, yeah, adenomatosis. perfect. This is nipple adenoma. adenoma and yeah, we yeah. also see white lines here, some white um, structures. Uh, and ulceration, pink and white structures areas. This is a nipple adenoma. I was thinking about the pedo disease, uh, but fortunately it's a adenoma. Good for yeah. the patient. And this is the last case. And you wonder uh, how it looks like on the nipple. This is a child. Uh, you see the melanocytic lesion. They all look like polygons, angulated lines, but it's a benign congenital nevus without changing. Very good. Nice. Yeah. Okay, that's it. <laughs> very good, very good. Beautiful very nice cases. cases. The last, Thank you. Exactly the concepts we want to we want to share. Yeah, fantastic. Beautiful. Fantastic. Okay, then, uh, Emilio, ah. you you have to say something. I have to say something very fast, and I will do it in a second. Come on, okay. So I have to tell you that one of the main problems that we all face uh, with all the photographs that we take now is, I mean, how we will uh, take the photos and how we can adjust uh, our new telephone to the handheld dermatoscope. If there is a specific adapter, uh, do we need to change the adapter? Will the old adapter fit and so on? So this to, uh, to a big extent has been solved by uh, Dermlight with this universal uh, adapter that can be magnetically connected to the, to, to the attached to the, um, uh, to, to the dermatoscope. And then also clamped to any telephone, uh, uh, irrespective of the model. And therefore, uh, it provides a very stable uh, equipment that you can take photos without having to worry about your new iPhone if it's going to be. So you mean you mean that if I have an old StarTac, you remember the Motorola StarTac? Even Nokia. Even Nokia, yeah. So you can attach it also to, to an old-fashioned Nokia. <laughs> so I was I was reading uh, today that Nokia is changing its brand name because people still connect it with the phones. While right now it's like a five G grand uh, company, and they're changing their logo so that people get out of their heads that it makes cell phones. It does something else right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting, fantastic. Bene, so bene, fantastic. bene. Oh, cases from eudermoscopy. What is eudermoscopy? I don't remember. By you the way, this week we had 53 new cases. So people keep uploading and please do. Wow. That's so interesting. Um, before we go to the cases from the eudermoscopy, some uh, additional cases from the nipple. Let's see. 
A mm-hmm. uh, 12-year-old boy, and this is the lesion, not a red nevus like the one that Nisa showed, like banal uh, nevus appeared six months ago, just monitoring. This is one... <laughs> Zeppi, what do you think? Uh, of course, you know, again, the most prob- probable diagnosis is Bowen, but melanoma cannot be ro- ruled, out, ruled out. Yeah, this was a 4.8 millimeter uh, Breslow melanoma. Ah. One yeah. of the two yeah. that I've seen in my ah. career. Shiny white lines, neovascularization here, really, really bad melanoma, and the patient denied surgery as well. Oh. Again. Oh. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully the outcome will be similar to Jeppe's patient. Yeah. So we, we biopsied just to establish the diagnosis because he didn't want to do anything. We biopsied this part, like the nodule next to the nipple. It was 4.8 millimeter breast low, and the patient denied doing anything. How still old? living? Uh, still living, yeah. Uh, how really? Old? This is 68. 68 ah. only? Yeah. Hmm. And when did you diagnose the case, Constantinos? Uh, one year. Is it a recent case? One year. One year. Yeah. So we may conclude that melanoma of the nipple is a good <laughs> <laughs> survival. No, unfortunately, it's one of those patients who doesn't want to do pets, he doesn't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so we'll see. And this is a 40 year old female with this lesion which appeared one year ago and it was growing gradually. Now, this one reminds a little bit the one that I showed earlier, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, eventually was budget, but come on, it's looking like a melanoma. I mean, how can we... <laughs> <laughs> so this is my second melanoma, exactly. Uh, melanoma. Uh, yeah, severely dysplastic and insights uh, falling into melanoma in situ category. Yeah. So you already have a case series, <laughs> Constantinos. Yeah. I have well, never seen one in the nipple. You never seen one? Yeah, yeah. I have to. Well, <laughs> these are the two. I don't have any anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking about gidermoscopy, it's not only an app. It's not only a game. It's a quiz and, edu- and an educational material at the same time. It's gidermoscopy. And well. Finding nipple lesions was extremely hard, so I went for something close. Uh, location of the test, 50-year-old male, uh, present for one year now. And mm. this is the dermoscopy. Sebi, can you bring up the poll? Okay, you show eight possibilities. It's, it's, it's the same melanoma is is the same possibilities that we also get on the on the game. Yeah. Let's see what people think. Nibus. 40%, solo lentigo 43%. So the thoughts are optimistic. How the Absolutely. votes were going on the on the app. 56% for Nibus, 21% for uh, this is so nice, you know. Uh, the so we can really conclude that democracy is repetitive. Yes, you know? it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that it's correct, but definitely re, it has an interobserver agreement. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to big numbers, then big sure, numbers. yes, yes, big numbers. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And it was that nice paper from Philip uh, Chandel that was in uh, Nature 2020, Nature Medicine, that showed that the best outcomes, the best like diagnostic accuracy was the majority opinion aided by AI. So maybe AI will improve democracy. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. But, uh, but can I tell you something? Yeah. But you the yeah. most because it's so funny. You know that the, the level 22 or 23 was launched very uh, recently, and, and I submitted the images. I was the one that submitted the images for this level. And then you know that I was trying to play, 
and I could not pass the levels. <laughs> Emilio, it happened to me as well. I submitted the level 19, I don't remember, and I went to play. And I was like, this is, Emilio, this is called Alzheimer. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> In another special location on the year, a 50-year-old male present for a couple of years, possibly changing per patient. This is the clinical ink spot. And this is the demoscopy. Let's see what people think. Vediamo, vediamo. <laughs> is it a melanoma? Well, dermatofibroma. How many? Uh, how many are going for dermatofibroma? <laughs> you never know. You yeah. never know. Let's see. One percent. One percent went. Okay. okay. So uh, uh, first, uh, first is solar lentigo. Yeah. 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 So, and yeah. he was falling second, and yes. exactly the same. Uh, That's the same Exactly. And so I think that this is an ink spot or solar event to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the last case, I want to do a live consultation with the audience and with you, my friends. Mm -hmm. So this is a patient that I saw two days ago, a former professor of mine, so doctor. So by all means, in the doctor, you, you cut it out, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. How old is she? Is he or is she? He's 72 years old. 72, okay. okay. Yeah, you excise it, 99%, unless it's a clear cut seborrheic yeah. keratosis. So this is the clinical. On clinical, it looks a little, a little bit like seborrheic keratosis. However, if we move to dermoscopy, and I want to focus on this photo, uh, there is some negative network. There is some neovascularization and something that couldn't be depicted well enough. There were vessels here. So. Yeah. And maybe, white lines a little bit. Yes. And in this area, it could be, if you forget for a moment, the, the north part, it could be a dermatofibroma. If you look at the bottom part, you know. Okay. But. Uh, and then I did confocal, and it was full of melanocytes, mm. full. So I, I excised it the next day, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm very curious to see what people think it will turn out. And of course, I will come back with the biopsy results when we have them. Well, if your assessment with confocal was correct, that, you, that these were melanocytes, then there's no doubt. Yeah. Well, you can see melanocytes. Yes. There is an erythema around the lesion, especially in the clinical image. Maybe it's a Meyerson phenomenon and it's a melanoma. It There's an erythema. He, he's very sundamans. He's very sundamans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Overall, you can see, like in the background, there's sundamans. There's like this. Uh, this erythema is all over his body. But let's see what people okay. think. Yeah. Sebi, can you bring on the question? I hope it's it's a it's a sub K and I did wrong. But let's see what majority will vote, and I will come back with the diagnosis. But you know very well, you know very well that uh, uh, from time to time we have to remove some strange seborrheic keratosis, right? So melanoma sixty two, yeah, and eighteen percent sub K. Sub K. Yeah. By the way, ten percent BCC. Mm -hmm. right? So you have to show us the, the result in a few. No, I, I will show you the the, histo the, the histopath images once we have them. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Fantastic. Fantastic. Jeppy, do you yes. have to tell us? I have to tell us something about uh, the new triasorb. Uh, just a moment. Just a moment. Here we are. Triasorb. I spoke to you already about this uh, new uh, sunscreen. Uh, it's a new molecule that, uh, and this is the first uh, publication uh, reporting many information about triasorb, which was invented by Aven, especially the physical chemical characterization and cosmetic formulation, the optical properties, the overview 
of safety and of course the scheme for the, the photo protection uh, properties, especially those from UVA, UVB, and as I told you previously, also uh, against blue light, which has an oxidative uh, effect. So this is uh, the new generation of antioxidant and um, and sunscreen uh, photoprotective uh, molecules. So remember, triasorb. Okay. Fantastic. Now. Fantastic. So now. Now, now, now. now. Wow. Penelope. So Penelope. Penelope is coming even earlier than 8 o'clock. Can you imagine? Oh, <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was by Sebi for Penelope. That was by Zeppi for, for Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look. So we are speaking about um, uh, uh, acrolitions, right? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Here you are. Uh, Penelope's gift for today, of course, related to acrolitions. And here is the panel of 12 lesions, my friends, my dear friends. Hey, okay, let's try, let's try. Quickly, quickly, let's play the simple game Benign Malignant, okay? Benign Malignant, okay? Can you, can you zoom in a little bit? No, you no, don't. No, Quickly, quickly, one. Nevus, yeah. two, yeah. congenital nevus. No, no, say Benign Malignant, one. Benign. 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 Three. External pigmentation, two. personal noma. Benign malignant. Two? Benign. Two is benign. Benign. Two is benign. Congenital nevus. Three. Ah. Benign. Four. Benign. Uh, Five. Uh, malignant. Six. Blue Six. Nevus. Benign. Seven. Por, uh, por, 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 benign. Por, benign. Benign. Okay. Eight. Benign. Benign. Nine. Benign. Nine. Nine. Nine is benign. Ten melanoma. Melanoma. Ten, ten, ten melanoma. Ten malignant. Okay. Eleven. Yeah. Benign. Nine. Twelve. Benign. So you said malignant in two in two lesions. We said malignant. Ten, four. Four is um, something. Four. Oh, four. Four and ten. Those are the malignant ones. And and in five you said the malignant. No no no. Uh, it was I was re replying to four. You Sorry. did quite well, let me tell you. Almost perfect. Almost perfect. Because one is nevus, two is nevus, three is exogenous pigment, four is nevus but atypical spits, uh, five is nevus, six is blue nevus, seven warty papilloma, uh, eight, uh, what's that? Nevus. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. Pillar uh, pattern. Nine ni, uh, angioma, ten melanoma, eleven tinea nigra, and twelve nevus. Wonderful, fantastic. We did very well. We did very well. You very did very well. well. No, no, you did very well. I told you, you did very well. So now, once again, I would like to remind to all our friends to send us their cases because we are coming very close to the episode that we will yeah. devote exclusively to the cases of the audience. Which it should, should be next one or after. Next the one or the week after. So, yeah. uh, so please send us your cases during these days and uh, we will see if the number is, is good. Uh, we'll do it next week. Otherwise, we'll do it the, work, the week afterwards. By the way, uh, guys, and I'm, I'm talking to the audience, will it be okay if we send you an email? like in the middle of the week to remind you to reply to this email and send us your cases, just write yes or no. And we'll probably do that and we'll gather all the cases. Okay, perfect. Banu says yes. Fantastic. Wonderful. So thank you very much. Good night. See you uh, <laughs> next Sunday. No, Emilio, no. Stay, stay, stay. Emilio. Stay with us. Emilio. Kahoot, kahoot. Oh, by the way, we forgot to say something very important. Very important. What? On February 28th was... Yes. Emilio's birthday. birthday. Oh, so, no, the older you get, the more you want to forget. 
Come on, come on, you turned you turned 31, right? So oh, 32. 32. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see today what's gonna happen in the Kahoot. Of course, as usually, we have the, the, the usual problem. No, but we don't worry at all because we know that this is a fake problem. In the end, everybody will be connected. So yes. don't worry if you get the message that uh, that the connection is not is not okay. It will it will uh, be uh, done as soon as I start uh, the game. So I just will give you five, six more seconds, maybe 10, that you are, uh, get connected. You select your nickname. You um, use this pin, 7294036. And, and also, okay. the, also the music stops for some reason. Anyhow. Anyhow, let's start in my view in five, four, three, two, one. Uh, let's see. Yes. Connection lost. No, no. No, no. here we are. No, here we are. Three, two, one, and, and, and. Okay. This is the first, uh, the first case with two images, one and two. Do you like them? Why not? We like them. Yes. And this is dermoscopy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like the grandfather and the grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is melanoma? Hmm. None. One, two, or both? Que bello, que bello. You yeah. see how nice I am because you accused me that I, I included very difficult cases in the last episodes. Que bello. The grandchild, the grandchild. Very good, both <laughs> melanomas, Most both bad. melanomas. This is a melanoma from the past, a melanoma yeah. of the previous era, and this is melanoma of today. Of the new era. Of the new era. Wonderful, fantastic. And we have Albertos. Albertos was, uh, in my view, a winner already. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Then, twin cases again, one and two. On the face, both of them, as you can see. This is dermoscopy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now comes the question, which is squamous cell carcinoma? None, one, two, or both. Sta bene, sta bene. But you will need to, to disclose what is the one at the end. What do you mean? Wow, I thought that people will be ah. trapped and vote for both. Yeah. But the majority did not. The majority found the correct answer, which was one. One is, of course, a well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. What about, num what about number two? Eh. Could be melanoma. Cells, like, eh? rule out melanoma. It's like melanoma. Be optimistic. Think positive. Be optimistic. Think positive. Okay. February okay. keratosis. Very irritated. Very irritated. Irritated one. No. no, very, very angry. Very angry. Very, very angry. Angry. Angry, angry February keratosis. <laughs> you biopsy? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, very good, Alberto. Still. Now. Question with no points. Very easy. Riesling is a white wine, rosé wine, red wine, or Scotch whiskey. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the question should be: Where is Riesling type, from? A type of vodka. Vodka. No, but there, <laughs> are many, vodka. there are several countries that uh, would fight for the origin of Riesling. It's not only Germany. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, but it's in the yeah. Yeah, it's Middle Europe. Okay. 91, fantastic, fantastic. No points here, unfortunately. And then twins again, one and two. 
Okay. Dermoscopy. Beautiful. Okay. Question. Which is basal cell carcinoma? None. One, two, or both? Hai capito. Hai capito. <laughs> Come on. Am I not good enough? Yes, you are very yes. gentle. Today. Yes. <laughs> very gentle. It, it will be his birthday, so he's in a good mood. Fantastic. 82 correct answers. Basal cell carcinoma on the right. And what's on the left? Separate keratosis with white shiny lines. Eh? Fantastic. By the way, I want to ask you, uh, have you seen many superficial basals on the face? Like on the not face, many, and, not, many. Not, not so many, but yeah. I feel I feel they're, they're like the least common subtype. Oh, on the face, yeah, yeah, yeah of course, yeah. by all means, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, I I don't know the percentages, but I was thinking about it. It's like it's always nodular or something else, yeah, yeah, yeah. or mixed. Let's say with a superficial yeah, yeah. component, and uh, yeah. Albertus is still uh, there from the beginning, which is. Yeah, uh, quite impressive, which brings us okay. to case can number you, four. Can you imagine there are 1,000 points separating me and Alberto? <laughs> <laughs> My friend, the games are not for us anymore. The games are for young boys, young guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, one and two, one and two again, dermoscopy. Ah, nice. Okay, nice. Yeah, wonderful images, both of them. And the quiz is, which is BCC? None, one, two, or both? That's not so easy. <laughs> That's not well, so easy. Well, it's... Uh... Come on, why? Why? What? I'm not trying to fool this anybody. Is, this is... Uh... Uh, let's oh. see. Oh, okay. oh, super voting. Wow. Amazing. Super results. Fantastic. Well, uh, amazing audience. By the way, very, very, very nice photographs. Eh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah beautiful. beautiful. Uh, Which camera? I mean, was... as usually, the dim light for the system. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, okay, but Albertus is, is trying to do something which uh, I don't remember if, if it was never done. Somebody from the beginning, no, but Alberto is basically unbeatable, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, but he's the, very fast. But Dermatolo girl is very close, like she has been also from the beginning. Yes, close. 100 points is just basically nothing, you know. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's like one second uh, on the on one the board. millisecond, yeah, millisecond. less than one second, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Darmatogor, Darmatogor. <laughs> second, second question without points. Philosophy. Who said this? Beppe. 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 People <laughs> revenge. Strong people forgive. Intelligent people ignore. Uh, ah, mm. Nice. Madonna, nice Arnold Schwarzenegger, Albert Einstein, Beppe. or Jeppe? <laughs> <laughs> Jeppe, Jeppe. Strong people Jeppe. forgive. Jeppe, you were second. You, you got second. more of <laughs> But isn't this nice? Weak people revenge. Strong people forgive. Intelligent people ignore. Yes. Beautiful. Nice. And, of course, no points here. Which brings us to the last question, which is this one. Uh -huh. Did you okay. like this note? I know, I like it. But look how much <laughs> you are going to like the dermatoscopic photo. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. Whoa. Oh, oh amazing. Nice. My God. Just follicular plus. Fantastic photo. So, lupus discoid, lupus vulgaris, lupus pernio, lupus miliaris disseminatum fasciae. Che bello, che bello. Beautiful. What kind of lupus do you think this is? And of course, the correct answer is... Lupus manarus. Lupus what? Lupus manarus. You know, lupo manaro? Lupo manaro is the... 
Peritay, okay. Discoid. Discoid, Discoid. of course, relax. The hallmark of discoid lupus. And now, podium. Third place goes to Lovri. Bravo, Lovri. Second goes to Dermatologian. That the first to Alberto. Alberto, Bravo. Alberto. Wow. wow, 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 wow. I would say that Alberto is very close to becoming the, the, the Kezia of season two. Hey, <laughs> chiaro, chiaro. Mamma mia, mamma mia. I was really, even even in the count, uh, I was not even mentioned where, where I am. Probably <laughs> number 400. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. But, Emilio, I think we should also invite Dimato girl. Ah, here, ecco Alberto, Alberto. Alberto. Hello, Alberto. Where you come from? I'm from Modena. I won the not ah, the last, but he won. Sì, certo, 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 Alberto, Alberto. So uh, after the third, the third uh, time. Yes, we say, because to... we have to give to Alberto a motivation. Yes. <laughs> so, no, Alberto. we have to do like in golf. You know, in yes. golf, with the, with the rule is that the, the better you are, the, 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 you, you go under zero. Yeah, you start yes. from minus 10. But <laughs> let me tell you something. I just finished my period in Reggio Emilia in uh, Rete Formativa. So I think that your spirit exhales from the walls of the, of the ambulatories. So I think... This is the yes. reason why. Yeah, we have to mention that uh, um, uh, Emilio and myself were spending a few years in Reggio Emilia. And, this is uh, where we learned so much about wines. Of course. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Osmosis. Yes, because of course, I mean, in Reggio Emilia, you can only work. And if you like, you can drink a little bit. But there is nothing to do anymore. <laughs> but now I'm back in Modena. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, Alberto, and, your and, goal is, is there are still uh, 12, 11 episodes for season two. You you are already twice the winner. The challenge is to be the winner five times. Really? <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah, come on. It's feasible in my view. Even not, even okay. Keisha was not able to, to win five times. So. I think she won four, something like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But wait, if he wins five times, what does he get? That's a good yeah, one. Then, then we have to make a competition, Alberto against Keisha. Ah, <laughs> competition of, 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 um, of giants, you know. <laughs> Item class. No, but if you get five, we'll definitely make something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, five. yeah. No, no, no. But then we have to make to do something. It will, it, it will be serious. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Ciao, Alberto. Bye. And thank you all. Thank you all. Bene, ragazzi. See you. See you next Sunday. G guys, I I love you. I will miss you. We miss you already, Debbie. Ciao. 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 Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone, for being here.